Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be showing you step by step how to rig a gun in Blender, or in this case, an AKS 74U. Rigging is the process of building a skeletal structure within a model. Once built, you'll have the ability to pose and manipulate that model for either an animation or even a 3D render. For this tutorial, we'll be using this very detailed 3D model of a Krenkov by Engon which is completely free on Sketchfab, so feel free to download it and follow along. The link will be in the description. Extract the zip file into a project folder. Then navigate to the FBX model and copy the URL. Open up a fresh Blender scene and make sure that the FBX import add-on is activated. Then go to File, Import, FBX. Copy that URL into the window and then import that model. Once the model has been imported into your scene, head over to the shading workspace. Select the object named Gun. You will see that the mesh is pink. That's because Blender can't find the current texture files. Delete the empty image nodes. Then, bring over the texture folder and drag and drop the textures marked Krinkov. Organize them neatly. Connect all of the textures to the material node tree. It should look like this at the end. Follow the same procedure for the magazine. Once you're done, go back to the layout workspace. You should now have a very nicely textured AKS 74U. Now go to Add, Armature, select Single Bone. Drag it over into the center of your model. This will be our anchor bone. With the armature selected, go to Data and click on the Viewport Display drop down menu. Go to the box titled In Front and tick it. That will make sure that the armature always appears on top of the mesh. Go up to the outliner and rename the armature to AKS 74U Armature. Next, select the gun and go to Modifiers and bring in an armature modifier. Select the object window and select our AKS 74U Armature. Now turn on X ray mode and box select everything. Press Ctrl L and select Copy Modifiers. That will copy the armature modifier to all the objects that make up this rifle. Now, let's stop for a minute and talk about the beginning steps of rigging. The first thing you'll need to do is identify all the moving parts of your weapon. For the AKS-74U, it will be the collapsible stock, the safety, the magazine, the trigger, the mag release, and the bolt. Some of these components are already separate objects, but some others are part of the main gun object. We'll need to separate them to make it easier for us to rig. First, go to Edit Mode and face select the bolt. You will see that this is a piece of floating geometry, so it's easy to separate. Press P and click on Selection. That will make the mesh its own object. Next, right click and go to Set Origin, and then click on Origin to Geometry. Now, go to the Transformation Orientation menu and switch it to Local. You will notice that the pivot point is lopsided. To fix this, go to the object menu, apply, rotate, and that will reset all the rotation values to zero. Go to the outliner and rename the new object to Bolt. That lopsided pivot point was caused by the main gun object, which the author set to follow the direction of the pistol grip. We don't need this, so let's reset it. Go back to the object menu, click apply, but this time press all transforms. Now let's separate the trigger and the mag release. Go to edit mode, face select the trigger, press P and separate. Set the origin to geometry for both these objects. Then rename them both in the outliner. Now let's start rigging. Go to edit mode, select the anchor bone, move it over to the pistol grip and resize it. Then right click on the bone and select Duplicate. This will create a bone. Move it to the AK safety lever and resize it. To get this bone to perfectly rotate this lever, we need it to be centered on top of this rivet. Click on the gun object and go to edit mode and then face select that rivet. Then go to mesh, snap, cursor to select it. That will relocate the 3D cursor to the center of that rivet. Click on the armature and go to edit mode. Select the safety bone, right click and go to snap, Selection to Cursor. That will move the bone to the center of the rivet. Now select the ball on top of the bone. We can use this to resize the bone and shift the angle so it aligns with the direction of the safety lever. 
Next, let's go back to the anchor bone and make another duplicate. Place this bone on the bolt and rotate it so it points in the direction the bolt will travel when it cycles. Next, we have the magazine release lever. With this bone, we'll need to figure out where to put it for the correct rotation. Luckily, the author has textured in the rivet, which in real life houses the pin that rotates the lever. So all we need to do is put the bone in the center of this small texture. A fast way to do this is to zoom in. Then, while holding shift, hold down the right mouse button, which will relocate the 3D cursor. Move it to the center of the ring. Once you're done, snap the bone to the 3D cursor. Now, let's move over to the trigger. This will be a bit more difficult, as the correct pivot point is not very obvious. To test where the most optimal position for the bone should be, move the 3D cursor to an area above the trigger. Then, set the trigger's pivot point origin to 3D cursor. Test different pivot point positions until you find the correct one. Then duplicate the anchor bone and snap that new bone to the 3D cursor. Make sure to angle that bone so it aligns with the trigger. Center the bones for the trigger and the mag release so they don't hang off the model. Now, let's duplicate another bone and move it over to the magazine. Lastly, we have the folding stock. Snap the 3D cursor to the stock's pivot point. Then duplicate another bone and snap it to the 3D cursor. Adjust the angle of the bone so it aligns correctly with the hinge. Now we have a complete bone structure. Let's get to work connecting these bones to their respective components. Let's start with the trigger. Now, there are two methods for connecting this bone to this mesh. The first is quite simple, which is parenting the mesh to the bone. To do this, select the object, then select the armature, then go to pose mode. Make sure the trigger bone is selected. Then, go to the pose drop down menu. Go to parent and select bone. That will parent the object to that bone. This will allow you to pose the trigger without needing an armature modifier or even weight paint. But it's much more robust to use the standard method, which is weight painting. So let's undo the parenting actions. In object mode, select the armature, then select the trigger. Then go to weight paint mode and select the trigger bone. Set that weight paint value to one. You can also right click to change that value quickly. Now, just press Ctrl X to fill the entire object automatically. You have now weight painted the trigger to the bone. Now we just need to repeat the exact same actions for all the bones on the weapon. Once the weight painting is done, we're going to stress test all these bones to check for errors. You can see on the stock that the pivot point is not correctly aligned with the hinge. To fix this, all we need to do is go to edit mode and pull the front end of the bone down ever so slightly. Switch between object mode and edit mode to see how your adjustment has affected your pose. Once you have the correct alignment, you can go to Pose Mode, select the bone, right click, and select Clear User Transforms. Now finally, we just need to connect all our bones to the anchor bone. In Edit Mode, select all the bones. Make sure the anchor bone is highlighted in yellow. Then right click and go to Parent, Make, Keep Offset. That will connect all the bones to the anchor bone, allowing you to move everything all together. Now, there's one last thing you should do to make the posing process easier, which is to add in transform limitations. For example, the bolt will only move in one direction, which is backwards and forwards. So we won't need the rotation controls. Go over to the bones menu, where you'll see the transform settings. Next to those settings, you'll see some padlocks. If you turn those locks on, it will disable the motion controls for the axes. For the bolt, lock everything except the y-axis. Now, you'll only be able to move the bolt forwards and backwards. For the magazine, we don't need to disable any transforms, because it's a detachable component. For the trigger, mag release, and safety, we will disable all the location controls, and just leave one rotation value. 
which will just pivot these components forwards and backwards. Now for the stock, we're going to disable all the transforms, except for the X and the Y values, which will allow for a full 180 degree rotation. Now go to the outliner, select all the objects, and select the armature. Right click and parent all those objects to the main armature. Now everything will follow that armature. Lastly, rename all these bones so they reflect their respective components. Once done, you have officially finished rigging this AK. Now pose it to your heart's content. But before you go, here's a quick bonus tip. You may notice that the chamber of the AK is exposed. The author never intended for the gun's internals to be exposed like this, which is why he modeled in a black mask for the space behind the bolt. When the bolt is fully retracted though, you will see the gun's back faces. So to hide these, we just need to extend this black mask. Go to edit mode and face select the mask, Control p and separate selected. Then in edit mode, select the vertexes on the mask's edge. Drag them over so it covers the empty space. Pull the top edge up so it fills the hole. You'll notice the mask is now clipping through the dust cover. Simply grab the top vertex and pull it down so it's out the way. To make the mask more dark, go to the material controls and set the roughness to 1 and the specular to 0. Go back to object mode and rejoin the mask to the gun object. Now with the bolt back, we can no longer see into the gun. Lastly, let's organize our files. Put all the AK parts into their own collection, and then click the Disable Selection icon. This will make it easier for you to select the armature when posing. And that's it. Now if you want a character to hold that AK, well luckily for you, I've already made a tutorial series dedicated to kitbashing one. So please click on the playlist link and check it out.